Hello, Father John Camus here, pastor of Saint Jean Baptiste's on 76th Street and Lexington Avenue. So welcome, and today we're celebrating the first Sunday of Lent. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. So to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, let's call to mind our sins. Let's also ask God to be our light, our guide in our lives. Lord Jesus, you carried our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you resisted temptation. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came and called us to repentance. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. <coughs> Let us pray. Father in heaven, through our observance of Lent, help us to understand the meaning of your Son's death and resurrection, and teach us to reflect it in our lives. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> so this week, I'm just going to read the Gospel reading. That's very, very short, uh, but uh, it's an important one. It's from the Gospel of Mark, uh, and Mark is really the shortest of the Gospels, and this passage is really very short. Uh, but again, very important. And after the Gospel reflection, I'm just going to read uh, for us today the Psalm at Mass. It's a very beautiful prayer, and I think it's very appropriate. So let's begin with the account of the temptation in the desert according to Mark. The Spirit drove Jesus into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment, he said. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel of the Lord. So today's gospel and the gospels in general invite us to enter the narratives they spin. We don't only recall an event in the life of Jesus so that we can think about it, we enter it. We become Jesus. We dress in his clothing, speak his words, feel his emotions. Today's passage, the account of Jesus' temptation in the desert, doesn't pull us away from our time or our world it intensifies it, it brings it into focus. I believe that the entire human family is experiencing a spirit-directed time of temptation. Many countries are in crisis. It has become painfully obvious that no one and no country is an island. Everything is interconnected, whether we want it that way or not. The Middle East is a powder keg. It's fused dangerously close to being lit. In the Far East, a city and a vast, powerful country are engaged in a dangerous game of chicken. The earth of Eastern Europe is muddied with blood. Democracies are floundering. Fascism continues to seduce one country after another, our own included. You and I and the entire human family are Jesus in the desert. Mark adds an important sentence to his account of Jesus' temptation that we need to note. He says, 
He was among the wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. God didn't take the temptations away. God didn't save him from the crucible. He was still in the desert, in the midst of the wild beasts. Mark is recalling for us Isaiah's prophecy of universal peace when the lion and the lamb live together in a new world, a redeemed world, the world Jesus called the kingdom of God. These angels who came to minister to him in the desert will again minister to him in Gethsemane as he begins his Passover to the new Eden. Mark is giving us hope. He's telling us that a time of temptation always opens to a time of grace. This year's 40 days of Lent, our time in the desert, may be one of the most important times of our lives. Temptations are sent to us to purify us and to make us strong. This Lent, we're being challenged to question the way we have been thinking. We're being challenged to question our loyalties. But the Spirit is with us in our temptation. The angels minister to us, and we're being guided to open our eyes and our hearts to envision, perhaps for the first time, the world God intends for us, the kingdom of God. Let's strengthen ourselves for these 40 days with Paul's word to the Christians of Corinth. He told them, the world as we know it is passing. I'd like to just end with that prayer that I was speaking of that is in the psalm today. So just open your heart and listen to these, these words that the psalmist gives us. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are of old. In your kindness, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows us the way. He guides the humble to justice and he teaches the humble his way. It's a beautiful call to prayer especially during this time. So we gather our petitions. So we bring our prayers and the prayers of all our brothers and sisters before the Lord, whose covenant with us is everlasting. So we pray for the church, we pray that we may remain faithful to the covenant God forged with our ancestors in the faith, renewed in Christ Jesus, and entered into in our baptism. Let us pray to the Lord. May we pray for our world leaders. May they resist the temptations of power and wealth and embrace justice and peace for all people. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for those preparing for baptism during this Easter. May this Lent, the final days of their preparation, open God's love to them. Let us pray to the Lord. And for each of us, may this Lent be a time for us to focus our faith and commitment to Christ and his teachings. Let us pray to the Lord. Let's pause for a moment and call to mind our own intentions.
So merciful Lord, help us follow the example of Christ throughout this holy season of repentance, trusting that our practices of prayer and fasting will make us, as Jesus asked, the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And we pray that our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from our hands for the praise and glory of God's name for our good and the good of all the church. Lord, make us worthy to bring you these gifts May this sacrifice help to change our lives. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. His fast of 40 days makes this a holy season of self-denial. By rejecting Satan's temptations, he has taught us to rid ourselves of the hidden corruption of evil and to so share his paschal meal in purity of heart until we come to its fulfillment in the promised land of heaven. Now we join the angels and the saints as they sing their unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy, indeed the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. And when supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world and make us grow in love, together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all and make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles, and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. And may the peace of the Lord be with all of you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we, called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul will be healed. Let us pray. Father, you increase our faith and hope. You deepen our love in this communion. Help us to live by your words and to seek Christ, our bread of life, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. So let us bow down our heads and pray for God's blessing. The Father of mercies has given us an example of unselfish love in the sufferings of his only Son. Through our service of God and neighbor, may we receive God's countless blessings. Amen. We believe that by his dying, Christ destroyed death forever. May he give us everlasting life. Amen. He humbled himself for our sake. May you, he follow, may we follow his example and share in his resurrection. Amen. And may almighty God bless us the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the Mass is ended now. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. So have a good week, everyone, and we'll see you next week.